Hey, what's up and welcome back to Freelancer Talks. My name's Joel and today we're talking about whether or not it's possible to be a freelancer on the side while you still have a regular job. Is this something you can do and still maintain a regular life? We're gonna talk about that and much more in today's video. That's right, as always, I'm sitting here staring at your questions and this question from MAA Artwork popped out to me. This is a great question. They ask, is it possible to be a freelancer and have a regular job, like let's say a doctor, at the same time and be good at both? If so, what can we do, what can we do to maintain both things? This is a really compelling question because I believe there are lots of people out there that don't believe this is true, don't believe it's possible to be a freelancer and have a regular job. They feel like they need to quit their job in order to pursue a career as a freelancer or, or make some giant leap to make it possible. So for those of you that think that's the case, I hope you stick around for the entire video because I don't believe it is the case. In fact, I think that this is the way that everybody who's starting a business or wants to be a freelancer, wants to get out there on their own, should start. They should start as a hobby, as a side hustle, as something you do alongside your regular income. And we'll get into my four reasons why that's the case. But first, let's talk about the example specifically mentioned by MAA Artwork in this question. He asks about being a doctor while trying to run a freelance career. So let me just say that there are some jobs that are going to require more of your time and attention and make it less possible for you to pursue something on the side. Doctor might be one of those because, and we'll get into this for my tips, but basically because some jobs require so much of you, you need to make sure you're prepped and ready before you go. Others that don't require a lot of brain power, in other words, like if you're, I don't know, you work at a toll plaza and you just take change from people all day, you know, you can be less than sharp and still do that all day. It doesn't mean that you're less than sharp. It just means that you need less mental capacity to take change from people than you do to come do open heart surgery. That's kind of self-explanatory. So I think it depends on your job. Some jobs will lend themselves to this kind of work where, you know, once I'm out, I'm out. I don't do any work at home. Others would require some things from you at home. Maybe you're on call. Maybe you have to answer emails. If so, I hope that's not the case. That's a little ridiculous. When you're off, you should be off. But you know what I mean? Some jobs make it easier for you to just be off when you're off. So you have to consider how your current position, your current job, what kind of flexibility it offers you. And this is really important before you answer this question for yourself, you need to make sure that you aren't contractually obligated to, to only have one source of income, one job with your current employer. It may sound silly, but some employers uh, make it make it a contractual agreement that you can't do anything else on the side to earn income except for this job because they're worried it might distract you. I know a few people who have been in situations like that and they've either done it and kept it a secret, which is dangerous, or they haven't been able to do anything on the side at all. So make sure it works for the type of job that you currently have and make sure that you're not going to, to get yourself in hot water. So I'm gonna give you four tips to answer this question. Uh, the answer, in if it isn't obvious already, is that yes, I think it is possible to be a freelancer on the side of a regular job, but you just have to do it right. You just have to make sure that you can consider the proper things. And so I've got four tips to help you as you're answering that question for yourself, or maybe possibly preparing to do that or already doing it and want to do it better. The first tip is don't mess up your main income stream. That's your day job. You don't want to do anything that would jeopardize that paycheck that is coming in, that is supporting you, that is paying your rent, making sure you got food on the table and clothes on your back. Don't do anything to mess that up. I see a lot of people put a seventy or eighty thousand dollar a year job in jeopardy, maybe because they don't like their job, uh, for a twenty thousand dollar a year side hustle. Now, a $20,000 a year side hustle is nothing to shake a stick at. That's pretty good, but you don't jeopardize a, an income stream worth four times more just to start something on the side, just because you don't like your job. You have to make sure that you, you do what you're doing well. When you're at work, be at work. Don't be trying to do your freelance stuff while you're at your other job. That's a good way to get fired. Uh, and in fact, I know people who have been fired for doing things like that and, and letting it affect their main job's work. So 
don't mess with your main income stream. And this is kind of a bonus to this first tip. Don't burn any bridges when it's time to walk away. Do your job well, and when you're done doing that job, if you want to transition to someone, somewhere else, something else, thank them for supporting you, for the compensation you received. Thank them for the opportunity and walk away with your head held high. Don't burn bridges and say, you can take this job and you know what with it. You know, don't do that. Don't mess with your main income stream. Uh, be a person that that can, can look back and say, I did that job well while I was there. I may not have enjoyed it, but I gave it my all. I, I didn't slack. I, I wasn't um, disrespectful. I, you don't want to be that person because you never know who knows? You might have to jump back into that field someday. You might need them as a reference someday. You can never say never. So don't burn bridges. Don't mess up your main income stream. If you want to be a freelancer on your own, one day start it on the side and grow it into your full-time thing. Don't burn bridges. Don't screw up your main job until it's time to walk away. Got it? Okay, here's my second tip. Second tip is make sure you've considered all the angles of self-employment, the full-time freelance lifestyle before leaving your day job. Here's what I mean by this. A lot of people would say, okay, let's just say uh, something close to the median household income in America, right around $50,000. I don't know exactly what it is, but I believe it's in the 50s. $50,000, you say, okay, uh, all I need to do is earn $50,000 a year as a freelancer in order to replace that job, right? Well, probably wrong. Unless you have uh, a, a job where you're a contractor right now, most full-time W-2 employee sty style jobs provide you with other things like insurance. And if they don't provide you with insurance, you definitely get cheaper insurance because you're a part of a group plan. Life, health, dental, vision, things like that. Even if you're paying for them, you're probably paying a much lower rate than you will out in the open market. So you need to make sure you consider that, that maybe the cost of your insurance might go from $200 a month to $1,200 a month. Ask me what I pay for insurance. It's more than $1,200 a month. You need to make sure that you're, you're going to have a plan for things like retirement. Uh, maybe your employer offers a 401k. Maybe they have matching. Maybe they give you a percentage on top of what you put in. Maybe they have uh, other kinds of savings plan or benefits program or stock options that you're getting. Um, and, and just beyond that, just regular benefits that you get from being an employee there. Some companies offer discounts on cell phone bills and things like that. Your, your home internet connection, whatever it may be. When you walk away from a regular job, you're walking away from some benefits that won't be there when you are self-employed as a freelancer. So you need to make sure, hey, maybe it's that if you're going to leave a $50,000 a year job and you add it up, you might have $10,000 worth of benefits or have $10,000 of extra expenses to get what you have there as a part of that, that employment opportunity. So, you know, in order to replace that $50,000 a year job, you might need to earn sixty dollars or $65,000 or $70,000 a year to, to have a truly equal lifestyle once you leave. Now, everybody and their brother is always anxious to get out of one situation and into the other. They'll make excuses and they'll say, well, I'm willing to work for less to do something I enjoy, but don't sell yourself short. I would not tell you to move backwards financially when moving from a regular job to a freelance lifestyle, unless your regular income is extremely good and you just want some freedom. Let's say you're, let's say you are a doctor, like the subject of this question, and you make let's say a couple hundred grand a year, $200,000 a year, but you find the lifestyle to be a grind and it's stressful and it's killing you and you got all your, your med school bills paid off, hopefully, because that's expensive, but you, you want to be a freelancer doing something maybe uh, different and, and you know, well, I can only earn $80,000 a year. Well, I don't think you'll be impoverished at $80,000 a year, but I do think that you're going to see an adjustment to your lifestyle. Be ready for it. Uh, but in most cases, I would tell you, not to move backwards unless your day job pays you a lot and you're willing to make the sacrifice for a better quality of life, a better uh, pace of life, less stress in your life. 
But I'll tell you that freelancing is not always the key to less stress because you got to go out and make that money and make sure clients are coming in along with doing all the work. So make sure you consider all of those angles. And that's why practicing on the side is a really good idea. And, and, making sure you can do it for a sustained period of time. This is kind of goes along with number one, but if you're setting this up and going, well, I'm going to side hustle for three months until I earn enough income to maybe leave my day job. That's not a good plan. I did this for 18 months before I jumped from the boat to the dock. Um, this is something that I did for six months to see how it would go, another six months to get out of debt, and then another six months after my debt was paid off to try to grow it to the same level as my full-time income. I worked from probably 6 p.m. to midnight or 1 p.m. for almost a year, six or seven hours a night, uh, pretty much the same amount of time I was putting in in my day job, nine to five, I was putting in on evenings and on weekends, seven days a week for 18 months. So quit pretending that it just happens in a couple months. Make sure you can do this long term until things really uh, come together and you've considered all the details and you can make a lateral move, not a step backward, something you have to be fearful of and then, then put yourself or your family in a bad situation. So that's tip number two. Uh, the third tip I would offer you is not to rely too heavily on one income source. Now, if you're on this channel, you know that that I also offer tips on how to become a top-rated seller on a platform called Fiverr. That's where I started a lot of my business, but I realized when I went to do this full-time away from a day job, not just as a side hustle, I couldn't just make all my money on Fiverr because guess what? Fiverr shut down. That's an income stream. If I'm relying 100% on that, all my eggs are in that basket what happens? Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I've been doing that as a seller for 10 years, but I immediately started building other income streams, started building a, an income away from that platform. Maybe you have most of your income tied up in a couple clients. You need to diversify so that if you lost one, you wouldn't lose your shirt. Whatever you're doing, you need to make sure you're not relying too heavily on one income stream, one income source as a freelancer, because the second you do that and the second one thing changes, you will be scrambling, uh, struggling, wishing you had that regular day job that you hated because it gave you a consistent paycheck. Make sure you're not relying too heavily on one source of income and you have branches. You have other things out there that you can go to, other places you can go to, other strategies you can dip into to, to draw income, maybe from the same service, but a different stream in a different way in a different place. Okay. Here's the final tip. The final tip is you need to have a plan for expansion and growth. Here's what you're missing. If you leave a daily nine to five regular job, what you're missing is the opportunity to climb a ladder, grow in your salary and make more money over time. Because unless you are let's just say kindly, unless you're a loser, your income's going to go up over time, right? Unless you're not a great performer, your income should go up over time. Even just to match inflation, it should go up. So if you make $50,000 a year right now, in 20 years, let's hope you make $10,000, $15,000 more, uh, maybe even more than that. No matter what your your field of, of, of work is, no matter what industry you're in, your income should go up over time. And so as a freelancer, it's no different. You need to have plans for growth and expansion so that you can be in a place where you're, you're earnings will go up with your experience. Maybe you're able to charge more and that's your experience that, you know, once I get a good client base, I can start being more selective. I can start charging more. I won't just make this much money uh, forever. Oh, I'm going to grow that or I'm going to grow, grow my client base. I'm going to hire people to help me. I'm going to run an actual business where it's not just me and we're going to grow in quantity as we grow in quality. And that's going to be the, the plan for growth and expansion, but you need to have a plan for growth and expansion. Otherwise you're giving up huge money money on the table in your lifetime earnings just because you wanted to do something different. Now, all of these things wrapped up into one final conclusive statement about freelancing just, just really mean think it through. Uh, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're giving up. Many of many of you watching this video are so anxious and so desperate for freelancing to be your full time thing. You want away from the boot heel of your boss, or uh, you know that phone call from your manager that calls you in on a weekend, or something you don't want to do. You want to be in control. But the the truth is, being in control of your life and your income in this way 
has a different kind of stress involved, a different kind of difficulty. It's not as though you're moving from the horrible nature of a regular job to the the savior of the freelance career. What you're doing is you're transitioning uh, one boss for many bosses, one burden for a different burden, one kind of stress to a different kind of stress. Yes, freelancing, I believe, is going to be more beneficial for many of you in the long run, but you need to think about all the angles. You need to be thankful for what you have, where you're at. If you're ha- if you're working a job right now and doing this on the side, don't look at that you know, out of out of the side of your eye and say, man, this is so disgusting. These people pay you money to be here. Put your effort in there. And when you get to the point where you're the employer, you're going to wish other people would do the same for and with you as a part of your team. So I hope that is helpful. I'm really thankful for that question. If you have a question that you'd love to see me answer in a video like this about freelancing, about Fiverr, leave it for me in the comment section. I respond to almost every single comment. You can attest to this if you've been here for a while. I want to be here to help you grow and and develop the the work life that you want. And hopefully these videos are helping you do that. So thanks for watching. Leave me your questions below and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. And until then, keep doing because the future favors the doers.